think I'm to the last. Oh, wow. Wee. I don't know about this. I don't think this thing's gonna run again. <laughs> Previously unrestored. Looks like another chore, don't it? Yeah, yeah. Not a lot of trees we're gonna have to cut, but a lot of trees that fell on it. I'd say this has to be one of the most sunk in the ground ones we've ever tried to rescue. Yeah. It's got a motor in it. Does it? Yeah. A little bit I can see of it. <clears throat> oh my gosh. Yeah, what little bit you can see of it's right. Yeah. Golly. And that is the top of the most packed in rat's nest in the motor I've ever seen in my life too. Supposedly this thing was running when they parked it, but it ain't gonna be running right now. I can guarantee you that. No. So you guys probably remember this old 1965 Ford me and dad recently rescued out of the woods. Now when we found this truck, it had been sitting for a long time and we literally had to dig it out of the grave it had been sitting in there. Now the story that we were told was this old girl was running when she was parked, but after we were able to get the hood open and examine it for the first time, well I don't even know if she's ever gonna run again. So we're gonna go ahead and get this hood off, start cleaning up that mouse stand the best we can and just hope for the best. Well, I said it once and I'll say it again, that is the biggest rat's nest I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, I don't know, rats or beavers or what's bigger than rat's nest. Every time we get something, I say it's the top one, but this one right here takes the cake <laughs> by far. <laughs> this thing had been busy for a while. Yeah. Said uh, there's supposedly, I like to believe, a, a V8 up underneath all this mess. But hopefully that's nothing whatever built it ain't still down in there yeah. i guess we'll just dig into it and hope for the best huh i think i got the i think i got the rougher end of the deal on my side yeah but it'll look like you did more too yeah. It's holding together fairly well, not just crumbling all and falling, making several hand, handfuls. Now, somehow they managed to pack that stuff tight. Yeah, yours is packed a lot tighter than mine. Mine's actually fairly, fairly manageable. We're gonna have to go dump it. Less than a minute into it. <laughs> kind of crazy we had to dig the truck out of the ground, now we have to dig the motor out dig of the, the ground out of the truck. <laughs> at least the trees out of it. I'm gonna go dump this. Okay. <laughs> Starting to lose it off the sides. I'm gonna check the oil since that's right here in my face. Pretty nasty. But it's in there. It's it's full of oil. It's it's really kind of thick, thickish, so. I already found the dipstick, huh? Yeah, yeah, it was just sitting right here, just. Yeah, my side eye, I mean. <laughs> it's pretty thick. Oh, yeah. yeah. Probably some good old Quaker state. Once again, though, there's a bunch of wires in here that don't look like they've been touched. That's what I say, these spark plug wires over here, what I see of them, well, that and that's yeah. As soon as I said that, I grabbed, I see the spark plug wires, every one of them is eight and a half on that. <laughs> but I'm in on like the yeah. firewall there, the actual wiring of the truck. Man, alive. This is worse than that Rambler was. 
Yeah, and I would thought, I would thought there's no way we can find anything really, really any closer to that rambler. Yeah, definitely do have a V8 up underneath there, though. Yeah. Let's go try to pull this battery off. I doubt it's got any charge to it. <laughs> it does, I need it on my truck. <laughs> well, of course, it's got a bracket on it. Maybe 916 is like a hood. Yeah. Question is, is it locked up? I'm about tired of messing with the, the seized engines. Yeah, me too. It was growing in there. <laughs> Pretty well yanked it out by the roots. There wasn't nothing on this truck that was rolling, was there, when we pulled it out? No wheels, I, they're all locked up. I think most of them are out. This one may have started, but it didn't make a quarter of a turn for it. I was messing with the transmission. I couldn't get it to, to move out of whatever gear it's in, so. When we get to trying to turn it over, it may be it may be stuck in gear. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Could need some air or something. Yeah, let me go kick on that compressor and find a rod or something we can kind of keep knocking this stuff loose yeah. with. Hold your breath and watch your eyes. Man, that stuff is packed in there bad. I'll let you try to get yours a once over and then I'll come back. Blow it back. back your direction. Yeah. Have you tried to get on that fan yet, see if it'll spin over? No, not yet. The water pump's not froze up, but... I probably seen some movement, but I guess... It's very little. Know. Belt's too loose. Yep. I hope it will. But judging by rusty valve cover, rusty intake, a foot, length pretty rusty. <laughs> a foot above it of just rat's nest and then having to dig it out of the ground anyways. Yeah. I think that works good enough to kind of see. I think so. Get a See if it'll at least turn over. I hate to spend too much time on it and find out it's a lost cause anyways. See all them wires, spark right, plug yeah. wires have been ate on and digested, not just, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's a foot pieces of wire missing there, so. Uh, I guess I'll go grab a socket to try to get on that crank and just put a little pressure on it, see if it'll move some. Okay. If it does, then we'll pull these plugs out before we move it too far, get some lubrication down in there. And if yeah. it don't, then we'll pull these plugs out and get some lubrication <laughs> down in there. I don't think it's gonna budge though. We'll see. Cheater bar, just in case. Said, I can't tell if it's in neutral. Go ahead and give it a little. Just tighten the bolt. Yeah. 
Let's try going back the other way, but I know it's just gonna loosen, loosen off that bolt. All right. Well, let's pull the plugs and get something soaking down in it, I guess. And like I said, we may have to get up underneath it and figure out that linkage, why it's not shifting right. Could be a bunch of nests built up around in that too. Yep. Get these plugs out of here, hopefully, without breaking them off. The 13 16th, ain't they? Uh, Ooh, yeah. this valve cover here is brittle and rusted bad. Might not hurt to pull them off, too. See what it looks like down in on the valve train. Okay, yeah. Now we finally got this engine compartment cleaned up where you can actually see a motor up underneath the hood here. Uh, found a 352 V8, and once again, this truck was running when they parked it and said it actually had a lot of pep to it. Uh, right now, I'm not gonna say she's a lost cause, but she isn't even trying to turn over. Uh, we're fighting the transmission of knowing for sure if it's in neutral, but we've got a socket on the crank pulley down here, trying to turn it over there, and it's not doing anything but just tightening in that bolt some more. So what we're gonna go ahead and do now is just pull out these spark plugs, get some kind of fluid down in there. We'll allow those pistons to soak so we can work it back and forth. Uh, probably going to go ahead and pull off these valve covers too and just see what the valve train looks like while we're at it. I don't know about them valve cover bolts on this side. I'm pretty yeah. rough. Same with the valve cover itself. Coming out though. Spark plug in place. Oh yeah, that one there crumbled all to pieces. Your valve cover's rusted over there too though, you say? Yeah, at the very top where that bolt goes in. <clears throat> pretty bad. Well, what do we want to try to put down in these cylinders? We've tried just about everything and nothing's really <laughs> worked too good for us. We besides always get the sledgehammer. Yeah. We always get called out for not doing the the vinegar even though we do do it. I think we ought to just try vinegar first. Try vinegar first and just get that one completely out of the Yeah, we can out try. Of the equation. Be fun drilling those out. Yeah. I think I'm to the last. Oh, wow. Ooh -wee. I don't <laughs> know about this. That does not look good at all. I don't think this thing's gonna run again. <laughs> Not without pulling it out and completely rebuilding it. Wow, that is dry and just full of junk like everything else. <sighs> Man. Ugh. I bought you extension mines. I've got a wire there that's kinda fighting me. I guess I'm on a Kind of put I don't these know plugs that I've ever seen one that dry. Bad, yeah. I'm gonna kind of put these plugs back in there so I can vacuum it or blow it out or something. Not blow it all down in them cylinders. I can believe this, but I'm afraid mine are gonna break off the exact same way yours did. The same, same too. Oh, I believe it. <laughs> After the way this thing has been so far, I think that might be the least of our concerns. Breaking. 
Maybe not. Oh, not that way. Well, yeah, we're fixing to show you the ugly truth. Yep, about the same, ain't it? Yep. Wow. How does it get that bad? I don't know. Even if the pistons ain't stuck, you know all this stuff up here is. Right, yeah, that's... So you say you're putting the plugs I'm putting, just kind of threading the plugs in there halfway so I can blow that out. I ain't blowing it down into the cylinders. I know this ain't the perfect thing to do, but <laughs> can't make it any worse. Spray that rocker bolts just in case we can get them to break loose, pull those rockers off. So now that we've got these valve covers removed from the truck, uh, this has to be the worst looking valve train I've ever seen in my life. Uh, they were packed full of just dirt and rust and just all kinds of debris. Kind of blew it out the best we could, sprayed down these rocker bolts with some PB blaster. Hopefully we can get the rocker out of the way. Uh, that way when we're trying to turn this over, we're not fighting the valves, trying to open and close them. We're only moving the pistons in the cylinder. So pull these plugs back out, get some vinegar down in it, and try to see if it moves from there, see if we need to move forward or walk away from this thing. Still nothing. Still nothing. You feel that bolt tightening in a little bit, but I don't want to break it off. Go back the other way just for the fun of it. All right. Let's try to get let's off. try to get that pipe wrench down behind there on that round part. Maybe we can use bolts or something to see if it'll turn over with that. We could maybe get on the flywheel like we've done before, but I don't know if we'd be able to pry down there or not. Doesn't look like it's very easy to get at. Will that fit on there? Yeah. I can just get it to grip there. I can probably crawl up here and put my foot on stand on it. Alrighty, that'd be a little easier than me trying to pull it down. <laughs> It's got a good bite, though. Bit. It's definitely got a good bite. I can't find what to grab hold of to help push. <laughs> no. It ain't moving at all. Try to Let's try to put this ratchet on there as well. I don't know if you can get it from that side or not. And kind of push while I push. Ready? Yep. Is it trying? I don't think so. No, it ain't trying. Uh -uh. Which <laughs> is to be expected as bad as the right. tops of these heads look. You know it's got to be just as bad, if not worse, on the bottoms of them down in the cylinders. So, vinegar no worky no. on this one anyways. It's still, yeah, I it ain't even it. let any seat by. Every one of them's completely full on this side. Well, do we walk away or <laughs> where do we go from here? Yeah. Wait it out longer or? I don't know that waiting it out though is gonna do. Yeah, 
I don't know that we're far enough into it yet to walk away. I mean, I guess we are. Anytime you can walk away, but I think if we could. I guess the next thing would be to try to get the heads off then. But we're gonna have to pull that intake off and get the distributor out, get the intake off, and then hopefully. I say we, we start with the intake. If the bolts will start coming out, we'll keep going. If they break off, then we're yeah, kind of. <laughs> I'm gonna say the likelihood of them breaking off is very high. They're pretty rusty. It's kind of a weird design on this intake. It's actually part of the the top part of the where the valve oh, cover. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's part of the intake. You know, a lot on the Chevrolets, the intake just kind of sits between mm. there. We can try. The heads don't look too bad on this side. Looks like about a nine sixteenths or so. Get this out of the way just so we can. Like I said, we need to pull that distributor out too. And I guess if they break off, they break off. We'll just try to deal with it later or whatever. Because some of these are so rusted down in there. As bad as all that looks. I, I, right I don't know that waiting any amount of time is gonna. Right. It's just crazy. As bad as all that looks, the top of the carburetor wow. looks, looks new. Yeah. It looks great, don't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's try to, uh, I guess, get this distributor out. I'll start seeing if I can pull loose some of these Let's intake see. bolts. Kind of on. Let me go ahead. Give it a little douse here. Ugh, that one there, the head's plumb rusted. 9 sixteenths is about a 3 eighths now. Yeah, well, that one right there is already broke. I didn't even put no oomph on it. Yep. It's broke right down there where it goes into the the head. So we're gonna have to try to dr drill that out, I guess. I can't even get some of these push rods to pull out of here. Oh, there goes that one. You know it's bad when, look at that. See that push rod? Oh, wow. Terrible. Well, that's cracked. It's cracked. Of course it is. Oh, that's broke. <laughs> Maybe it can be welded together. Golly, that one's got a bite. It won't even spin. I don't want to break that vacuum advance off of it. Right. To, we can, Brand new inside there. Points and stuff don't look too bad. So I believe they were tuning it up right yeah. before they parked it. I mean, possibly a new carburetor, new points, and rotor button, new distributor cap. And then life happened, I guess. Yeah. does not want to move. Can you maybe tap on those vice grips while I try to pull right here? I think it did move a little bit. I thought bit. I it just a hair. Will that pull out with the intake if we had to? Uh, I think yeah, it should. It should. We're out of acetylene in our torch, so I don't know if I could use the plasma and try to just shave off the head of, of this thing here right. or not. Yeah. I don't want to mess up that intake. Well, the thing is, we, in order to get that off, I've got to get all mine out because the way it's shaped, it's going to have to come this way. Because Yeah, we've got to get them all out. Yeah, I'm, I mean, even if you cut that head off, all mine have to come out because they're fighting against each other. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, I see so, what you're saying. That just the head being off won't help. Right, yes. Unless I cut it down inside the. Right. Uh, so they're almost going to have to be cut down. Down below the. Yeah. Well, you know, it'd be better then to do that. If I'm going to have to do that, just take the sawzall and try to. Which you don't have to cut it down next to the head. You can cut it up higher. Just where it comes through the. Can I get a sawzall blade in the ones yeah, that are left? You could probably get a sawzall right Not in that there. one, maybe. Yeah. That, so you got these three? These three I've got to get. I bet I could. No, that one I got it loose. So it's just this one and this one that I like. Maybe with that push rod out of there I could. Let me go grab a, let me go grab, I got to cut this exhaust anyways, the sawzall and try that out. Okay. I know everyone's saying, all the little pieces of metal that are going <laughs> down in there, but it ain't no different than all that rust right. that's already in there. Rusted yeah. as that was, it sure was strong still. It's one of those things where you have to make a decision on whether you want to <laughs> yeah. move forward, move or, forward walk. or just walk away and leave it. I think that's got all of mine then. I had to kind of get up underneath mine in that gap and pry them upwards just to Your what? The, the bolts just to get the head to come okay. up some. And it may not matter now that they're cut, honestly. They should just pick up, huh? That one. No wonder why this thing won't turn over. Even if the pistons were completely free, all those lifters and everything else are completely stuck, you can tell. One of them. I think we're gonna have to soak this whole truck down in evaporus. <laughs> there it is. That all of them? That should be all of them. Oh, you didn't do that one up there, okay. Look at oh, the wow. bottom. It's completely rusted off. Yep. Or broke off. Could have been broke well, off. Probably broke it off trying to get it to twist there. Ugh. That might be fine. Well, that one there wasn't far from yeah. twisting off. Worst engine I've ever tried to work on by, by far. <laughs> yeah. I guess the distributor is about the only thing left that I don't know if we don't get it out. I think it should lift up with the intake, but. Yeah, as long as it's not. As stuck as it is, you know that intake's probably stuck the same. Right. We get that big pry bar inside there. Might get underneath that thermostat housing, kind of just pry. Oh yeah, there's a little lip there. I said that, that's coming up, ain't it? The distributor's stuck in place, I think, but. Yeah, that ain't good. Can you pry anywhere over there? So we may have to get that thing out of there. Uh, da, da, da. Not really a. Gosh, it's so stuck, though. No place to pry. Not really, I mean, the only place I can. I, uh, I can you get it with? <clears throat> yeah, that might. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to break anything now. Can I get up underneath this? You can get up underneath, you know, the bottom part of it right. there. It's just hard to... Oh. There it goes. Something did, didn't it? Something. Oh, that's just the intake popping up over it, of course. 
Whoa, we. It went or it broke? It broke, I think, but. Let's try to get this lifted off of here and maybe set the hood back on it yeah. before it starts raining a lot more. Not that it's gonna hurt anything. Woo wee. Yeah, it broke the thing on it, so. Did it break it? Yeah. I mean, at this point, it, I mean, it was... wait until you see up underneath this intake. I don't think we've done any harm. <laughs> Broke the, the the cast on it there, but like I say, it's oh my gosh! Yeah, that is terrible. <laughs> How does one even get that bad? I don't know. There's it's a it's a garden down in there. <laughs> It looks just like the ground. Oh, man. Now do we walk away? <laughs> if we don't walk away from it at this point. It's one of those things though, where you're like, yeah, we should walk away from it. But if you don't and you get it going. Oh yeah, I mean, a, it'd be a, cool. Yeah. But I mean, when aluminum is got itself welded down into the thing there and you have to break it to get anything off. Yeah. But I mean, it's gonna take lots of cleaning. Yeah. Just to get it to where you can see what you're doing. Yeah. I mean, we can go ahead and pull these heads off. I've already got mine ready, except the exhaust and these two. I mean, we might as well just see what okay. it looks like in the... I mean, yeah, it's in the cylinder at this point if it keeps sprinkling it ain't gonna hurt anything in there no let's set this inside and try to get them heads off i guess so we decided pretty early in the game to go ahead and try to tear into this motor a little bit more uh, and i'm glad we did we could have waited forever thinking that vinegar was going to break these cylinders loose and this motor has a lot more problems than that so once we were finally able to get the intake off it's just completely corroded and just full of trash in here on the block so we're just going to go ahead and pull these heads off now see what the cylinders look like in there at this point we really have nothing to lose uh, but we're just going to tear into it a little bit deeper just to see what we've got here. Two of them I can't reach without a shorter extension, maybe. I mean, a shorter. Three quarter? Just need a regular three quarter. Three quarter. Yep. Uh, I've got one here. Never mind. I've still got these two over here. I've got to try to get out of the top too. Yours coming okay? Or? Yeah. Except for maybe that one. I don't know that I can get on it with that. But. Uh, battery dead. Go figure. Let me try that socket on these. Dead battery. Can you maybe pull? Yep. Watch it and see if it spins down low there. Come on. Yep, it's turning down low. Sure? Well, I'm gonna have to find a battery to cut that with. I have to go grab one off the charger. Need some help? Uh, here in just a second. I'm gonna try to. I might have to go grab a charge battery anyway. <clears throat> Going the 
right way, ain't it? Yeah. And I can see how rusty it is down in there. That one, you, know, you already got it. Yeah. yeah. I just got these back ones. That, that's all I like. I think it is. Yeah, let me give it a little spray. Guess that's better than breaking it off, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so other than just cutting the exhaust now? Cutting the exhaust, and I believe that is it. Wish I could get on them bolts and just take it loose at the flange there, but looks like it'd be a pretty good chore. I'll let you try to. There we go. <laughs> good luck with that blade. Cut's nice, but I don't know. Your side looks a lot harder. Yeah, I don't. I don't know about getting in there at any. Well, we have to go from underneath. I think that's going to be my best bet. To try to get. I can crawl up underneath there. <clears throat> Do we want to take this head off real quick or? Yeah. See if we can anyways. Oh. Wow. I mean. Yeah, they're not. Not terrible. Huh. Not terrible. Not even that side of it. Yeah, even those are. Well, now it makes me wonder what the crank looks like down there. It may just be all the issue up below that intake. I bet it blew an intake gasket at some point. I'll try to cut that other. Okay, yeah, like I said, it's just, you can't get at it right here at all because wow. of the steering box. Big old bore on those. Some big old pistons, ain't it? Yeah. I guess I'm just so used to messing with that little stuff here lately. When you go from that little 1200 dots. <laughs> Oh my God. Hang on, you're stepping on my blade. Oh. <laughs> I was trying to straighten it, I think. I can cut it here, but I don't know. I don't know if we'll be able to get it out. Uh, it's kind of got a curl to it, but I'll try. Can you see that? I can see that. You think that will work? I think so. Well. Where's all the water coming from? It's coming from these pistons ahead. Oh, it's coming off? Yeah. <laughs> I smell it now, it's <laughs> vinegar. <sighs> yeah, man. <laughs> Yeah, I smell it big time. What in the world? I'm gonna kill the grass. <laughs> I don't know where to grab it. Same on your side, kind of that back one. Yeah. Look at the bottom now. Yeah, that is. They're not very, look pretty good. They're actually not, none of them are even stuck open now that uh -uh. I'm thinking about it. I didn't notice on that other yeah, one. Yeah, the other one I seen two of them. Some of them yep, were. Yep, two of them at least were open. Let's real quick try to suck out them cylinders and just kind of see what they look like. You know, I got to thinking, Anybody new to this channel, we pull that head off and say them cylinders ain't that bad. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty rough still. Yeah. Just what we're used to messing with, it doesn't look terrible. And maybe when I'm comparing it to the, below the intake. Right.
So now that we've got the heads pulled off this block, it really doesn't look as bad down in the cylinders as I expected it to be, especially in comparison to up underneath the intake there. Uh, now I really don't know what we need to do as far as moving forward with this, if we can even make any more progress. Not to say we've made any kind of progress so far other than tearing this thing down. Uh, I guess at this point we'll just try to keep cleaning it up the best we can and I feel like maybe drain the oil out of it and just let it soak with some diesel, uh, maybe some evapo rush, just fill the block completely up with it and hopefully the goal would be to just see if we can get the motor to turn over again uh, but once again don't even know if that'll ever happen. Well guys, as you can tell, we're a whole lot deeper into this project than we ever anticipated or wanted to be. Unfortunately, we had to pull the engine out of this truck, and with that, we had to pull the transmission as well. When we tried to break the two apart inside the truck, just the clutch and the pressure plate, everything was just so rusted on that shaft, it wouldn't allow them to pull apart. So we got the transmission out with it, and we were able to separate it once it was out of the truck. So now we're just about to dig back into this block and kind of show you guys what we got going on here. As you can tell guys on these lifters right here, they're ex still extremely rusty. Uh, we tried to go ahead and put vinegar on there at first, uh, let it set a day or two, and it actually seems like it made it rustier. So we drained out the oil that was in here and it was actually just super sludgy and would hardly even come out of it. Uh, once we drained what we could, we filled the block completely up with evaporust all the way up to the top. It seemed like that might have been working okay until we found out that our oil pan was actually rusted through in the bottom between the cross member and the oil pan. So the old sludgy oil, the dirt between the cross member where this truck was buried was obviously just keeping what oil it had in it. So right now we're just gonna go ahead and pull this oil pan off, see what it looks like on the bottom end. Maybe try to clean up in this area a little bit more. Uh, we've got some rust dissolver jelly we can possibly try on there. Maybe plug it off with some more evapo rust and just move on from there. Yeah. Pretty rough, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah. I say it ain't as bad though as what I thought it might be. No, not up not up there, but on the oil. Pretty sludgy though, oh, ain't yep. it? Look at that. <laughs> yeah. Water got in here somehow, a lot of water. I mean, I guess that evaporust could have done it a little bit too. It's water-based, but still, that stuff was sludgy like that before we put any of that in there. Oops. I guess we can flip it over and check, see what everything else looks like on that crank, huh? Yeah, let me get this last one. I'm gonna grab some shop towels. Yeah, I want to reach down in there and just see. It's pretty. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Yuck. Mud that pie. Is, yeah, that's. Yeah. That's I don't nasty, guess nasty. it could be any worse, actually. <laughs> I guess it could. It could be completely dry. Right. Forgot about that being in there. Yep. That ain't terrible. No. At least none of that stuff is. No. I either. think all of us locked up is on those lifters. I don't think any of our pistons are actually froze up. I was kind of concerned about the timing chain, but it looks it looks really good. Really? I mean, it's it's going to be old, but it's. it's I was hoping maybe we could get at those lifters and knock them out this way. I don't even see them down in there though. There's a lifter there. We might be able to get at some of them. I don't know. That's gonna be the trick though, is getting, getting the lifters out of it. Cause like I said, I don't think that it, we're stuck on our pistons and cylinders uh -uh. or our crank, it's just, that cam and lifters. Let's flip it back over and see. Oh. We're gonna have to get, get some of that rust off of those somehow. Yeah. Which these front ones don't look 
as bad as the back ones, it looks like actually that one right there. It looks like the front half, you can kind of see at least an edge on them. These other are just like, I don't know what you'd call that, rusted in, I guess. I wonder if you could <clears throat> get in through there. Oh, that one moved. moved. We could get to some of them then. Well, praise God, who'd ever thought? I said these ones might be able to come free. I don't know if you can get, that's the only one I can get at from this side. Two of them over. Unless I can get on that one, which that one's rusty. No. Oh, wow, that one there was that easy. That one's out. That one's out. Let's see, one more I can get at, but I don't know that it's. You know, that still looks pretty rusted, so some of these might come out. I can't get any more out of that one there. That's... I think we need to probably try plug these off, fill it up with Evaporust again, or try that rust jelly, see if that works. Yeah. Uh -huh. That jelly should stay on there, you know, at least, but still yeah. got to get the try to get the distributor out too. All right. But I mean, at least knowing those are, I don't know that these would actually ever be reusable, but if we can get them out, we can put new lifters in it, which may mean putting a new cam in it too. I don't know. Right. New lifters and old cam probably means a guaranteed <laughs> flat cam. But right. Let's try that jelly out, I guess, and see if maybe these will break loose like those ones did. Works for me. So we went ahead and ran a wire brush across the head of these lifters and applied that rust dissolver jelly just to let it set overnight. Now we've never used that product before so we're really not sure how well it's gonna work, but kinda at a point where we just gotta try something else and just hope for the best. Uh, we come in the next morning, unfortunately it didn't seem to do its job so we tried a little bit of heat, still these lifters didn't wanna budge. We decided to go ahead and pull off the timing chain cover as well as a timing chain which runs to the cam, hoping we could turn over the crank and be able to knock the lifters out from the bottom. Once we got the timing chain loose from the cam, well, you guessed it, the crank was completely stuck as well as all the pistons. At this point, we're just going to go ahead and try to pull loose some of these rod end caps. Uh, hopefully we can drive some of the pistons up out of the cylinders and then just get on this crank the best we can, hammer it around back and forth, and hopefully we can finally get it to turn over. Coming, ain't it? Yeah, there we go. Ooh. I think we can get a, another turn out of it. We'll at least know we've got a full revolution on it. <sighs> oh, hang on. That one piston rod. I think now that we've got it turning, we need to connect those back up. Probably so, yeah. But I mean, the ones that are connected are, you know, moving in and out, and we've done bang those ones loose, so. I think if we can wheel this back around, connect them back up, and then try to work it again. Okay. Uh, do we need to go ahead and get that one, or? Yeah, we can go ahead and kind of get that one connected back, and then wheel it around and get those on there, too. Okay. Then I think we should be able to make a full revolution, all the pistons moving in and out like they should. <laughs> and, then, then get, <laughs> and then try to get the lifters out of get it. Get back maybe. to where we were headed. Yeah. Now that we've got these rods all put back into place and everything torqued to spec on it, she's actually turning over pretty easy and pretty smooth down here on the lower end. And now that this crank is spinning over, we'll be able to get down on some of those lifters, hopefully, and just smack them out with something. If we can't get these lifters out of this engine, then there's no way it's ever gonna run again. So hopefully we can get a pretty good lick on them. If they come out, we'll move forward with new lifters. If they don't, we'll probably wrap this thing up. Oh, yeah, that one's coming. So can you come all the way out with it? No. I'm just coming at the wrong angle to... We may just have to see if we can, you know, yeah. pump them down and then grab them with uh, yeah. pliers or vice grips or something and try to pull them up. I think so. Oh, there's another one I can get at. Ready? Yeah. Should be on this side. Okay. Yeah. That one almost will come out. That'll come out a good little ways. Which I'm not sure if that might have been one we already had broke loose, so. Uh -huh. 
I think it's just going to take a little bit of back and forth until we get them all popped loose and we're probably going to have to grab them from the other end and right. pull them out. As rusty as they were, they're probably going to grab all the way out. Oh yeah. That's crazy. As bad as this looks up here, yeah, or in how bad it looked to begin with, I'd have never thought it. Looks like it caught on fire or something now, don't yeah. it? Or it needs to. <laughs> Definitely gonna take new lifters though. I think they'll all come out. It might just take a little bit more persuasion on some of them than the others. So we finally got all the lifters broke free out of the block from the bottom side. We were also able to get on the what was left of the distributor and knock it out as well. Uh, we installed our timing chain and our cam gear back on there. So now we're trying to get it to turn over and found out that the cam is froze up solid. We sprayed it down with some PB blaster and it's been soaking just like everything else. Uh, but at this point, we're not really sure if it's ever gonna turn over or if it's gonna break or what it's gonna do. Uh, but I believe the biggest problem we've had with this project so far is just not knowing when to stop on it. So with this, if that cam breaks, that's probably going to put an end to this whole little project here. But hopefully we can get it to work back and forth just a little bit. If it'll turn over, we'll try to move on to the next step. And if not, we'll wrap it up. You know what? It, it broke. It broke the, uh, it broke the gear on the cam. Just down there to sat. It broke the gear on the cam right there. Oh, yeah. So I don't know if we were, if the cam's still moving. Right. Oh man. This has been a struggle all the way, ain't it? Yeah. Guess we'll take that off, see what it looks like behind there. Try to move that just a little. Let me see if I see if anything else is moving down in here besides. I don't know. Huh? I see it moving. The cam is moving. I mean, the, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's only moving right in here, though. Yeah, I don't know, because like I said, that's that much movement, you would think that yeah. it's not moving at all. Ain't moving back there. No. Nothing. Nothing. And it's just barely moving there, so. Yeah, it's a bigger gear, so it's not gonna be as moving as much as the right. crank there, but it may, I don't know, it may be broken there and we're just kinda rocking the, the end of the camshaft right. back and forth, but you'd think it would've just broken, just completely spun around. Yeah, I mean, if not, then. <laughs> We'd have to pull this hole. Yeah. You have to pull the crank out, I mean the rods out, the crank out, everything on this bottom end to get that cam out if it's stuck on every little bearing. Whew. Please come out without breaking. Good grief, that goes way on in there. Yeah. Lord, please let this slide out. I think it's coming. It's definitely coming. I'm to say I see it moving here. I don't know why I did that, because you did all the work. Take it out and clean it up real good. Throw it away. <laughs> Ooh, 
Well, we finally got the camshaft out of the engine, and as you guys can tell, it's in pretty rough shape. Now, where the bearings actually fit on there, it's not too bad. It ain't rusted up, but on the, all these lobes here, it's extremely rusted. So, now we've been putting a lot of abuse on just trying to turn this thing over. I mean, we broke the cam gear on it. Uh, so, I don't know. I think our best bet at this point would just be to replace the cam. Since how we're going to have to put new lifters, it would just make sense. New lifters matching new cam. But uh, it all boils down to do we want to put that money into this truck and hope that it runs or do we just want to cut our losses where we're at right now is where we'll have to decide from here. But I have to say, we got this out. It is a little bit closer, I think, to seeing if it'll run. We just still don't know at this point if it ever will. We went ahead and let this original cam just soak in evapo rust overnight and decided we were just going to try to put it back in the engine. And originally our goal on this truck was just to try to get it up and running with the original parts, so we just decided to put it back in there and hope for the best. We patched up this oil pan the best we could and obviously replaced parts that just had to be replaced including the oil pump and all the lifters on it. Now on the heads of this thing we had to put a ton of work in them. Obviously all the valves and springs were just super rusty so we had to try heat, a ton of PB blaster, uh, even cutting the springs and replacing them. We degreased everything the best we could on putting it back together and now that we've got our intake, our push rods and our rockers all installed, it's actually turning over pretty good. So it turns over really easy by hand. All of the rockers are moving the way they're supposed to be. All of the springs seem to be closing the way they're supposed to be. So now there's only one last thing to do and that's add $20 of a rattle can spray paint just to make it look like it should run just in case if it don't. It's pretty loud over here. This valve is stuck still. Is yeah, I think it's partially sticking. <laughs> Seen any oil come up Not yet? Not any oil yet. I see a little bit. A little bit. A little bit there. A little there. Uh, oh yeah, mine's starting to. Okay. I think it's getting close. So I think I see oil down in it. I see oil in mine. Yeah. Once it's turning over quicker too, quicker, yeah, it'll yeah, definitely it pump it up there. I just wanted to be sure we had oil pumping up here to the top end. Right. Well, do we want to put some plugs in it and see what it does? I think so. Put the spark plugs in it and probably want to go ahead and throw the valve covers back up on it, keep from throwing oil throwing everywhere. Throwing oil everywhere, yeah. If it's... Praise God. I was hoping there would be no clunks or knocks. <laughs> Kind of crazy for as bad as it was. That's right, yeah. So now that we've got the engine back in the truck, we're able to turn it over with the starter for the first time. So it sounds pretty good. It feels like there's a lot of compression coming out of these uh, spark plug holes here. So now we're just gonna go ahead and put the spark plugs back in it. Hopefully we've got our new distributor in time. So we did put an HEI distributor in it since that other one broke in half. We had to put a new carburetor on it too because the whole bottom of the carburetor was completely rusted out. So get these spark plugs in here, make sure everything's in time on our firing order. And I think she might try to bust off on us.
Got yours. You got them. I guess we'll go grab them valve covers real quick. Okay. Crazy how much better this thing looks with just some yeah. <laughs> spray paint. It's crazy how far it's come though. Yeah. Talk Crazy. about a drastic before and after. Well, out of all of them that we've messed with, this has to have been the... Most, most fight, ain't it? Yeah. But also make it the most rewarding if it runs. Right, yep. Yeah. When it runs. Yeah. All right. So this was number one, right? What's that? One o'clock. One five four. Yeah, it's one five four two six three seven eight. So I should have mine right here. Man, makes it a little nervous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now we want to put a little gas in it. Are we forgetting forgetting something? Uh, I think we should be fine. I think gas is our next. That thing's not real tight. I don't know if I should put a little bit of a snug to it just to make sure it don't move a whole lot. Allows us to still move it. Right. Yes, I guess. Yeah, might get a little squirter and maybe some start in our carb cleaner to keep it running. Let's see it forcing it in there, so. Let's see it come up the tube. Let's try that. We'll yeah, get a little gas coming out through that, so. We can squirt some and gas in here, and I'll go in there and try to see if it'll start with the key. And it's probably gonna take it a little while. I'm glad that one valve ended up not yeah. staying sticking though. Everything clear? Everything's clear and ready to roll. See what it does. You ready? I'm ready. I'm nervous. <laughs> What was that? It was coming out up here. I thought I seen it blow out somewhere back here, but. Now nah, something ain't right. Uh, shouldn't be spitting back out of the carburetor like that. Let's try to check it at a, make sure top dead center and everything looks right again. Well, <laughs> it's gonna do it, ain't it? Yeah, it's going to. I hope it is.
Got any more gas? Yeah. Fill that bowl on up a little bit more. It is going to run. I just can't tell if it's taking it in there very good. We'll have to run a uh, some fuel to our fuel pump now. Yeah. fuel in our yeah I didn't really think point. honestly it would be this easy I didn't think so either <laughs> ready yep I would say it, it ran for a second <laughs> Come on. Huh. I'm gonna get some more gas. Okay, so maybe yeah. not. Here we go. It's starving for fuel. Let's hook that. You want to hook that tank up? And I think so. Yeah, that way it's be pumping on in there. Yep. If we can get it to crank up and run long enough, where we can play with that distributor to make sure we've got it about as close into time as we can. Should be enough to see something, huh? It's idle for a second or two. <laughs> yeah. Might take it a while though to get it pumping up in there. to this next couple times. <laughs> let us switch and let me try to okay. I wonder if it ain't just a little bit still probably had a need to go one way or the other yeah yeah I don't know why that chokes not going down on us definitely pumping up gas so. yeah yeah it's pumping gas for sure ready yep all right All right. Woo. All right. I don't know I why it's it. doing that, huh? I thought it was going to run that time. Well, it keeps doing a big old backfire up out of it about the time it could be one of these valves that are still, still sticking. sticking every once in a while. Yeah. Go ahead. I, that was it almost. Well, it's burning. It's a lot of that old oil and stuff, too. Oh, burning. yeah, I forgot about that being in the pistons. All right. Come on. Come on. This is it. It's, uh, it's still not getting enough gas down in there for some reason. Or we're getting too much air, I guess is what it would be. Yeah. 
because I'm having to really pump on it. I was hoping it'd crank out. But let's try it one more time. We should have made it where we could crank it out here. And uh, if you, if I can keep it running, if you want to mess with the distributor, because I'm gonna have to hold the choke a little bit. Okay. <laughs> All right. I think a lot of it's a choke though. It needs to be choked. Yep. It ran. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's no doubt. That's crazy. It sounds good too. I mean, other than it being extremely loud well, from no yeah. exhaust. Let's try to figure out this choke and okay, then mess with it key. again. Oh, so it's not burning up anything. May have to try to adjust it some. What do you think? I don't know. Is it, I mean, it's, it's surging like. Yeah, like it's almost like the accelerator pump or something. Yeah. Like it's just. Sure, I don't know of anywhere that could be a vacuum. So I don't know what would make it surge like that. So we ended up having to pull this carburetor back off. It was sucking a lot of air on the back side of it. Uh, the way we had applied that gasket on there the first time just wasn't allowing it to seal off right. So we got it pulled off, flipped it on the other side. Now when you hit the key, Dad, if you want to show them what it does. She cranks up and just purrs like a kitten. So she's sitting there idling. I mean, there's no way, no reason why this thing should be running as smooth as it is, but there's no smoke. She's revving like she's supposed to. You can go ahead and kill it. The only thing left to do now, I feel like, is try to get these brakes unlocked. Uh, see if we can shoot some air to some of these old tires. If not, switch them out with some wheels and tires that'll hold air and just see if we can send it on down to the other shop. Try and make it down there. All righty. Door won't stay shut, so I'm sitting on a bungee strap. Another thing we figured out is we only have first and reverse because something's wrong with the linkage here, so. It's going to be a slow trip, and of course, no brakes. And I have no clue what the steering's going to be like. <laughs> but she's moving, folks. Oh, oh this thing's hard to steer. I thought we were in. 
reverse, we're in third. So we have reverse and third gear. <laughs> and a terrible pull to the left. I cannot believe she's actually moving under her own power. And just stop now. Slow down. It's hard to believe just a few weeks ago, me and dad were literally digging this thing out of its grave. I mean, this is a truck that a lot of people would have just walked away from and said it's far too gone. And to be completely honest with you, well, there were times that we probably would have agreed with that. This thing was completely wrapped up in death with the biggest rat home we've ever seen in our lives. And once we got inside the motor, well, it wasn't any better. Everything was rusted up, locked up, chewed up. I mean, the odds were completely against us on this. Every time we get to a point to where we felt like we were gonna have to walk away from it, seems like we had a breakthrough and it was always right on time. If you guys haven't realized already, we only played a small part in the outcome of this truck. And it's pretty obvious that the future of this thing wasn't destined for the grave. Turns out what most people call dead, well, it was only sleeping. And for that, to God be all the glory.